Give me your money. Oh my gosh. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Hey, it's Zeke. I'm uh, riding in the back of a pickup truck through a prepper community, and I'm trying to figure out if we should be afraid of the end of the world. So. I have been, to one degree or another, preparing for my entire life. The Father God is calling his people to the Ozarks. Demons and angels are real, and Jesus wasn't a pussy. People in the year 1000 thought the world was ending. People who saw the plague thought the world was ending. I think it's more relevant to your life to look at what could be a natural disaster for you personally. In New York City, nobody knows how to do anything. You don't have to use a lot of survival skills. Turn your left arm! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! You're dying! Hurry up! We have a phrase we use, I can be your best friend or your worst enemy. You get to pick. Ah, ah. Clearly, we are gun positive, but I like to say we're not gun crazy. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, we're going down the rabbit hole to ask, how afraid should we really be? On this episode, Doomsday. Store shelves nationwide are dwindling or totally empty. FEMA admits failures occurred in its disaster response to Hurricane Maria. A ransomware attack forced a vital U.S. pipeline offline over the weekend. There's a lot of fear on the news these days. With global pandemic, raging natural disasters, and a fragmenting republic, we've been forced to think about a possible scenario where our institutions collapse. I started hanging around the corners of the internet where doomsday preppers congregate, and I stumbled upon the Viking Preparedness YouTube and Patreon channels. The world is going crazy! What intrigued me about the former Green Beret turned pastor, Joe Fox, was his caffeine-fueled sense of urgency. Preparedness is a biblical concept. You have to take steps now. If you're not ready, you're in trouble. He also scared the shit out of me when I told him I lived in New York City. You know, there are two cities in the United States that I firmly believe are going to get nuked, and one of them is New York City. Feeling rather unsafe in my own home, I went to meet Pastor Joe to learn more about his lifestyle, which did seem a little extreme to me. But I also wanted to see what I could do in my own life to be more prepared. Welcome to the show, Farm Mountain. Hey, good to meet you, man. You too. I brought you, you some coffee from New York because I know <laughs> I know you. I see you drinking coffee every morning. Big sips of coffee. I so uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Shofar Mountain. Okay. Uh, it started out as an intentional community. We wanted to live in a way that would allow us to get closer to God, and it has become what's known in the vernacular as a prepper retreat. And so everybody lives on here as Shofarians. All people who live here are Shofarians, but not all Shofarians live here. Okay. Does that make right. sense? Yes, absolutely. We call ourselves Shofarians. It's just a, a whimsical term we came up with. Oh, it's a great term. I love it. I love it. So how, how many people live with you up here on Shofar Mountain? That is classified. Okay, all right. A few. A few. I mean, can we, can we say? Um, a few families. More than a, a few families, more than a dozen families? A few families. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. As a security measure, Pastor Joe was repeatedly vague with some of my more specific questions. We call it operational security. Uh, Those are classified. I won't tell you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what happens if somebody came in here? Would you just kind of stop them here and say, hey? We know. have we have stopped people in the past. And honestly, I think I'm a pretty nice guy. I mean, as things go, I'm an asshole with trespassers. Can, I mean, this is a good time. What, what, can we ask you what you have on your on your hip here? Can uh... I mean, I'm just carrying a handgun. It's a Glock. Wait, well, you carrying a Glock? Okay. Yeah. We, everybody carries Glocks. Are, are you always armed? Are you always, yeah. you, you never leave house, never leave the house? I never go house. anywhere without a gun. Okay. There you go. Okay. Just don't point the muzzle at anybody. Okay. I asked Pastor Joe to show me some of his firearms. I'll have to come back. Okay. Let's do this load. I have too many guns to carry in one trip. That makes me a survivalist. And as always, he was elusive in his answers. Can I ask you how many guns you have? Enough. I'll be back. Okay. But he was willing to show me a basic prepper's firearm kit. Wow. Okay. So this is a, an assortment of... Um, Prepper firearms. Okay, and it's not your full inventory. This is uh, enough of enough of your in. This is enough. It's this enough to enough. get the point across. I okay. Think. And okay. These are the types of firearms that someone who's 
relatively serious about preparedness would probably have. I think with a lot of folks today, they might just say, oh, I've got a, I've got a Glock and I'm good to go, or I've got right. an AR-15, I'm good to go. Why do you have such a Well, they're all tools okay. and they all have a purpose. And while you can drive a screw into a piece of wood with a hammer, it's not the best tool to do that with, sure. right? You could do everything with an AR-15, right? It, it could be so, home defense, it could be yeah, hunting. I mean, technically, you could kill any animal in North America with a 22. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly. But when it comes to a fight, if you have to shoot a lot of bullets and reload, uh, you need the ability to have a magazine-fed weapon that you can reload fast. And so, that's why I have it. Pastor Joe invited me to join some other Shofarians at their shooting range to learn more about why they train. Cody is our range officer. I'm gonna be the safety officer. So we're just gonna start with pistols, focus on the fundamentals, give me one shot, and we'll do that a couple times. We're good guys. I think you're probably a good guy. We don't get to pick when bad things happen. Bad guys get to pick, mm -hmm. right? You and I aren't gonna walk around and start stuff with anybody. But we don't control the bad guy. And we train everybody. Take your time, look at the sights as I watched some impressive shooting skills and even got a brief lesson on how to aim an unloaded AR-15. You want to lean into the rifle. Almost like, have you ever played football? Yeah, yeah, well, right. no, I didn't, sorry. Okay. I've seen it done before. Right, very similar to that. I still couldn't quite understand what exactly they were preparing for. What scenarios create these so-called bad guys? What do you think about and you go, oh, I got my eye on that? Well, we're biblically focused. And so in the Bible, we can read about the end times. And I believe, we believe, we could be on the cusp of that. And if that happens, it's chaos. Society will break down. There's at least two places in the United States that are going to be nuked. It's biblical, and New York City's one of them. And it'll happen like that. Somebody maliciously takes down our power grid. Some really smart computer guys are like, tick, 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 tick. well, what do you do in America with no electricity? Think about yeah. it. America would go into chaos. And our response to COVID, I'm not real impressed with. I was raised with just that whole, we need to be ready for things we can't control. And then uh, I went in the military, I was in special forces. I've been all over the world. I've seen things that fall apart. And I see how people who are prepared for it can roll with the changes and, and do okay. And people who are just like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. They, they just get dealt with and I don't want to be dealt with. As part of not being dealt with, Shofar Mountain is based on a homestead model, which stresses the importance of self-sufficiency. The property includes multiple bug out cabins to serve as modest shelters when shit hits the fan. This will probably end up being like a bedroom of some kind. It'll get okay. finished. They're small, but it beats a tent. Some more permanent residences for Joe's family. So there's six people who sleep in here. Uh-huh, and there's some kind of big bed theory or something. I don't think they're doing that anymore, but okay. like they're a very tight family. An active garden. And this little thing here is fennel. It's really sweet and kind of, you know what it tastes like. Oh, that's perfect. What? That's perfect. Oh my gosh. And lots of stockpiled goods, including these buckets and barrels of food. Beans, rice, corn, stuff like that. And we've done the math so you could think of two of these as basically a year supply of food for one person. You know, before you said on the porch, you said you're a, I think you said a hardcore prepper, I think is that the term you used? Did okay. You, what does that mean exactly? Well, I guess there's a spectrum, right? I think a prepper would probably have a couple months worth. So, you know, they've got a little bit of food, they've got some gadgets, they have a bug out bag. Okay, that's a prepper. We're at the other end of the spectrum. We're trying to be self-sufficient. I call us neo-pioneers, kind of like the Amish with guns. The Amish with guns, that's yeah, it, okay, right. okay. Finally, Pastor Joe showed me the newly added longhouse, which serves as a meeting place for the congregation he leads. I've seen this building in your videos here. Right, we have our services in here, um, but we also have like community classes in here. I knew the Shofarians believed in Jesus, who they called Yeshua, but there were several instances of Judaism I couldn't quite wrap my head around. We've got Hebrew writing here, yep. and, Shema uh, Israel. and the shofar here. Yeah, but you still talk about the Bible. So, yep. what the you know what exactly is? Uh, uh, you want to know about my religion? Yeah, I guess there so. There you well, go. Yes. Okay, so we firmly believe, and when I say believe, it's it's too small of a word. It, we know, God the Father laid down the rules that He wants everybody to live by, and that's called Torah. Right? So you, 613 rules, you gotta live by these rules. And he sent his son 
Jesus Christ who said, follow me and, and da, 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 the whole Christian shtick, if you will, mm -hmm. there, we put the two together Okay. Uh, because we don't think there's any difference. We're getting to heaven, if you will, by the grace of God through the blood of Yeshua. That's what we believe. What makes it so much more advantageous for you to be here in this community? First of all is the Ozarks. Many people, not just me, have the same feeling that the Father God is calling his people to the Ozarks as a, as a place of safety for what's coming. And here's the thing about the Ozarks. We have everything we need, but we don't have anything in abundance that anybody strategically wants to control. Wanting to get a better sense of how big the Shofarin community was, I drove a few hours south to meet a second group. We're about to go meet up with TJ, who also goes by Bear Independent. We're at what's known as Bear Camp around here. And he's another kind of satellite campus, if you will, of the Shofarians. One tribe, but uh, multiple camps. I can't say what town we're in, but it's tiny. <laughs> and it's uh, not a lot going on. Hey man, how are hey, you? Good to see you. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. Hello, hello, I'm Zeke. Nice to meet you guys. How you doing? My name's TJ Morris, Bear of Bear Independent. So what's your connection to Shofar Mountain? There are multiple camps. If you're near to us, then you're in Bear Camp. If you're near to Pastor Joe, then you're in Mountain Camp, so forth and so on. You've got the tattoos, you play the drums, you like your whiskey. You don't strike me as uh, the, the stereotype of of of, of, a, of a Bible thumper, <laughs> of a holy man. Well, point blank, Jesus wasn't a pussy. Straight up. Everybody in this group would first and foremost acknowledge that Yeshua is Mashiach, that Jesus is the Christ. But there's something deeper here with what we're doing other than the fact that we've all agreed to mutually assist one another if the shit hits the fan, bro. Like, that's great, but I'm not living for doomsday, I'm living for Tuesday. Across town, TJ showed me his first aid company that he runs with other members of Bear Camp. Well, this is Refuge Medical. We are a first aid supply company and training organization. There are many okay first aid kits. There's a handful of great ones, and ours is one of the great ones. Does your team have a first aid kit? We do, in fact, I have it with me. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, where is it? Yeah, you bring it. Right. I'm bring it. It's very little. I'm going to have them look at it. I hope they don't judge me. Judge us too hard. Oh, 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 and some pressure bandage. He knows. Yeah. Wow, you you knew exactly just by looking at that. You yeah. knew what that so, is. Uh, oh, we, we, we do this for a living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a tourniquet? Have you ever put a tourniquet on? You want me to put a tourniquet on you? Tourniquet, last door! Oh, shit. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! Uh, okay. Uh, What's happening? No, I'm you're gonna you're gonna 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 myself. Okay. okay. You're dying, hurry up! Uh, you're bleeding. You're out. dying, hurry up! Hurry up! Wait, it's still hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! That's really being put in the spot. <laughs> Bet you feel yeah, the pulse. Feel the pulse. <laughs> See, I got a pulse. I'm still alive, right? No, but it's hanging. You are all the way dead. <laughs> What's our time right now? Huh? You're going to love this you feeling. Have to actually constrict that. Feel the difference? Yeah. Okay. And then this is how tight it should be. Watch his face. See that face? Here it is. How? See that? <laughs> I like the one like wonder. Then that goes through, and then this goes across there. Do you feel the difference? Wait, what are you feeling my pulse? Nothing. <laughs> you really? Is my arm like uh, That's the point. That's the it's point. supposed to restrict the flow of blood from here down. It it doesn't, good, right? Yeah, yeah, can we take it up now? <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't stop the flow, you yeah. haven't saved your life. And hey, look, you, you can see all the veins? Pumping. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's how it should be. So that that's yeah. how you know it's working. Real quick, yes or no, are you guys afraid of the end of the world? I'm not no. afraid of no. <laughs> no. Anybody? Anybody no, here afraid? Okay. No, no. This right. is not out of fear. It's not from fear, it's common sense. When you when you know something is going to happen, or you have a reasonable suspicion, why would you not prepare for it? Anybody who thinks that the government is capable of managing a crisis, Hurricane Katrina. It is not physically possible for the government to take care of everybody on a large-scale crisis. Because of those experiences, we've been able to 
figure out how to address those needs for ourselves that should something happen, we're not at the mercy of the government. Now that I had a better understanding as to why the Shofarians valued self-sufficiency, I asked the foxes to show me some basic survival tricks. Sister Kate showed me a day in the life of running a homestead. So we're gonna take this big brush pile down to our chicken run. Back, boys. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no. And taught me how to milk a goat. Think of it like a water balloon, and you're squeezing the water out the bottom. There you oh. go. You did it. Look at you. There you go. Perfect. Oh, wow. That's just amazing. And with that, you can feed yourself. You can have goat's milk. Right? You can have goat cheese. <laughs> that was lovely. And considering I don't own a firearm, Pastor Joe showed me how to defend myself against bad guys with some rather unsuspecting objects. And there's all kinds of things you can do with this. Of course you can use the teeth. Picture scraping my eyes with it. I can come up here and hit you in the neck like this and yeah. rip the face. Use this like a hook and hook them here. Yeah. Or somebody's got you like this and you just reach back and go da, 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 da. Ah, ah. See? <laughs> See? And it's nothing, right? It's just yeah. like, but it's like, get off of me. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Like that's right. like and a then, step in there. You know, you got it. You've got a table full of weapons here, but for self-defense, you don't even need all this. No. I mean, you're, you're, you're more lethal with the cove than, than I am with well, the AR-15. Called, uh, they're called uh, environmental weapons. The more time I spent with the Shofarians, the more I realized how this type of lifestyle was not as extreme as it was prudent. You know, I'm surprised by how normal everything is here. You and your husband watch Netflix. You both have a really good sense of humor. You're both you're both uh, you're, you're both very charming individuals. Oh, really, thank you. Uh, I, I don't know. I've just you know I think it's really easy to 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 be able to on paper to be like these people must be uh, some sort of minds, cult out of right? your minds. I don't know, the Waco people right. or something like that. It's sure, exactly. Right? What is the perception that you get uh, from uh, from other people, and what's the reality? Okay, so. I, We've been called Amish mercenaries. We've been, we've been called gun-toting Bible zealots. Um, but yeah, I consider us more kind of 50s style, mom and dad kind of normal. Who's to blame for this kind of, for, for troping you out, if you will? There are movies that would portray people like this as very extreme or, or just add dimension to what we actually are. I mean, all we'd have to do is, you know, be more gun friendly or a little more extreme in our political views, and then you could kind of have an argument for extremism there. As my time with the Shofarians came to a close, I was ready to return to New York, motivated to ensure my own safety should chaos ensue. I was, however, still having difficulty imagining a life that balances preparedness with paranoia. You know, for certain folks, it's really easy to sit around and watch the news all day and get really into the survival's mindset and just say, okay, I'm not going to interact with this world because it's going to end any day right. now. And then just essentially waiting around for... Chaos. For chaos. When I will rise and be... Right. But we should prepare as humans on at least two axes. Chaos could be around the corner. And the other one is, you're going to get old in a relatively normal society, despite the fact that you don't like the government, it's gonna pretty much go along as it has. And so you ought to have a plan for that besides, you know, buckets of beans and rice and an arsenal of firearms or something. And so you do have to plan on two axes, which means if I have $30 of disposable income, do I buy mutual funds or do I buy rice and beans? Yes. Yes. Yes, you should do both. <laughs>